This video was made in partnership with Nubi, who are just as obsessed with movies as we are. Stephen King might not be a fan, but horror enthusiasts consider it a classic, and a terrifying one at that. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 scariest moments from The Shining. For this list, we're revisiting Stanley Kubrick's groundbreaking 1980 adaptation of the Stephen King novel of the same name, highlighting some of the most iconic scary moments in the film. As is to be expected, a spoiler alert is now in effect. Number 10. The Gold Room Good evening, Mr. Torrance. Good evening. Far too many horror films rely on jump scares and other cheap tactics to elicit a response from audiences. And that's what makes this scene so remarkable. There's nothing inherently scary about it. Anything you say, Lloyd. Anything you say. In a different film, everything about this exchange could be taken at face value. Heck, it could have been a pleasant time travel trip into the past in the vein of Midnight in Paris. But we know that the Overlook Hotel is empty and that Jack is most certainly not time traveling. At least, not in the traditional sense. Jack is clearly losing his mind, and that makes this entire sequence deeply unnerving. Especially the ominous bathroom exchange with Mr. Grady. It's his mother. <laughs> she uh, interferes. Perhaps they need a good talking to, if you don't mind my saying so. Number 9. The Bear Costume Jack might be the one losing grip on reality, but he's not the only member of his family seeing things. As she flees from her husband's violent rage, Wendy spots, much to her shock, someone in a creepy bear costume with a man in a suit. <laughs> It catches the viewer off guard just as much as it does Wendy, but it's their blank stares and silence that really imbue the moment with a sense of dread. As with much of the film, people have been debating the significance of the scene for decades. All we know for certain is it's totally unexpected, and due to a number of visual connections to Danny earlier in the film, it makes your skin crawl. Do you remember when you were brushing your teeth? Yes. Number 8. The Hedge Maze as film scholars have pointed out, the Overlook Hotel is an incredibly disorienting place. The physical layout of the hotel fundamentally makes no sense. It's spatially impossible. And taking this disorientation to its most literal extreme is the hedge maze outside the hotel where Jack attempts to kill his son. Danny! I'm coming! The scene is incredibly dark and foggy, and the spotlights scattered throughout the maze only serve to highlight Danny's small, fragile frame and silhouette as he runs for his life. The tracking shot heightens the anxiety and makes the viewer feel utterly lost in the labyrinth. By contrast, we see Jack head on, so that his terrifying screams are directed right at us. He can't get away! I'm right behind you! It's an incredibly effective sequence, one that, come morning, ends with a horrific sight. <laughs> Number 7. Red Rum Jack might be this film's villain, but Danny, for all his cuteness, can give off some serious, creepy little kid vibes. What about Tony? He's looking forward to the hotel, I bet. Hi, it's a dot. Often channeling his imaginary friend Tony, Danny seems to become increasingly unhinged as the film progresses, but at no point is he scarier than in this scene. Repeating the word red rum in his croaky Tony voice, Danny picks up a knife from the bedside table. Red rum. Red rum. Considering his mother is fast asleep in bed, you can't help but fear the worst. Instead of committing matricide, however, he writes red rum on the door using his mom's lipstick. Red rum. The whole scene is one big exercise in building tension, and just when you can't take any more, the tension breaks, only to reveal the true meaning of red rum. Red rum! Stop it! Red rum! Red rum! Red rum! Number 6. Jack Kills Dick Halloran I guess you could say the Overlook Hotel here has something about it that's like shining. Stephen King has a knack for writing deranged psychopaths, but he's also got a talent for crafting genuinely sympathetic characters who seemingly wouldn't hurt a fly. 
Now, for all the liberties that Stanley Kubrick took with the source material, one of the things he did not change was the characterization of this fan favorite character. Sadly, what he did change was Dick's fate. Anybody here? Having heard Danny's psychic call for help, Halloran returns to the hotel. As he walks its halls in search of the Torrance family, you're filled with a sense of dread, and rightfully so. Jack comes out of nowhere, cutting Halloran down with an ax to the chest. After the deed is done, Jack Nicholson seems to channel the face of the devil himself. Number 5. Jack's Typewriter Given all the madness, ghostly encounters, and violence at the Overlook Hotel, it can be easy to forget why Jack took his family there in the first place. The goal was to give him an opportunity to write. Get a lot written today? Yes. As the film progresses, Jack begins to show signs of increasing mental instability. But it's not until Wendy takes a closer look at his typewriter that she realizes just how far he's gone off the rails. It's just the same sentence over and over again, and it casts her husband in a completely different light. This is the turning point, and from this point on, Nicholson plays Jack as all crazy all the time to terrifying effect. How do you like it? <laughs> Jack and Wendy's staircase exchange is particularly unnerving. Wendy, stay away! Darling, light of my life. I'm not gonna hurt you. You didn't let me finish my sentence. I said, I'm not gonna hurt you. Number four, the blood elevator. It's not a particularly long scene, but it's one that's imprinted itself upon generations of cinephiles and horror junkies. Sometimes referred to as the river of blood, this is one of Danny's many visions. Don't tell me, tell me. As he stares into a mirror, he sees a lobby with elevators. In slow motion, blood begins to flood in. A rushing torrent that fills the room, splashes up against the walls, moves the furniture, and eventually even engulfs the lens of the camera. The symmetry of the shot, paired with the dramatic movement of the blood, would actually be beautiful if it weren't so gruesome and so foreboding and so uncomfortable. Number three, here's Johnny. One of The Shining's greatest strengths is that it manages to instill fear in the audience by slowly ramping up the tension. Wendy. I'm home. It creates dangerous, menacing situations and then refuses to look away. Jack doesn't suddenly pop up out of nowhere. He slowly approaches the bathroom where Wendy is trapped, unable to fit through the window. There's no mystery, just a loved one turned madman wielding an axe, slowly cutting through a bathroom door in real time as his wife screams in terror. Little pigs, little pigs, let me come in. Not by the hair on your chinny chin chin. It's brutal and all the more frightening because it feels so real. And as if that's not scary enough, Jack proceeds to crack a joke, adding an entirely new level to the terror by making it clear he's enjoying what he's doing. Here's Johnny! <laughs> Number two, the Grady twins. Frequently emulated and parodied, but never duplicated or recreated with the same effect, this scene is among the most recognizable in the horror genre. It's a real work of art. As Danny Torrance rides his tricycle throughout the empty hallways of the Overlook Hotel, he suddenly comes face to face with twin girls in old-timey dresses. Hello, Danny. This unexpected appearance is shocking enough as is, but it only gets worse when they reveal they know Danny's name and ask him to come play with them in that creepy way that only ghost children can. Come play with us, Danny. Then, just when you think it can't get worse, Danny sees their grisly fate cranking the horror to new heights. Tony, I'm scared. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one, room 237. It was as though I'd been here before. I mean, we all have moments of deja vu, but this was ridiculous. It was almost as though I knew what was going to be around every corner. Over his long career, Stephen King has crafted an elaborate fictional universe populated by all manner of dark, twisted, and horrifying entities and objects. 
And yet, for all the cosmic terror he's created, this hotel room remains among his most iconically terrifying creations. It's worth clarifying that in the book, the room in question is number 217 and not 237, but it all works out the same in the end. Danny reports that a woman strangled him in the room, and later, Jack comes face to face with her. At first beautiful, she transforms as they embrace, revealing herself to be an elderly woman whose skin is rotting away. <laughs> it's one of the most famous scenes in the history of the genre, and it remains scary even after repeat viewings. You went into the room, Danny said? To 237? Yes, I did. And you didn't see anything at all? Absolutely nothing. This video was made in partnership with Nuvi, who are just as obsessed with movies as we are. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.